Oh my god. I'm not waiting in that line, dude. Four, four. Four million four hundred thousand. I just don't want. I just don't want to call it on the market this yet. Today is the biggest auction day in Sydney ever. So, so, so. Unbelievable results today. We had 105 auctions. So you may recall in our first episode, we had an auction in Anzac Parade in Kingsford, Kensington. Um, that property didn't actually sell. We didn't have a registered bidder, uh, but we ran the auction, so there are auction conditions on the day. Incidentally, that property still has not sold. And I spoke to Tony Califonis, and Tony was mentioning to me that we're actually going to be relaunching the property as another auction campaign, but with a reduced price guide to try and generate some more activity around that sale. So this is quite common in the market where properties don't sell. Sometimes we can reinvigorate the sales campaign with a new auction campaign, set a new date, create urgency around that date. But the important part about it is there needs to be a big difference in the price guide to be able to generate more activity and possibly new buyers. I mean, there are new buyers entering the market all the time. So I'm looking forward to getting a sold sticker up on that one. Hey Damien, how you going? Hey Cam, good mate, how are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. What ended up happening with Duncan Street? Yes, they, they hadn't looked at the Strata reporters so that they hadn't purchased it. Yep. Uh, but uh, they ended up deciding that they would prefer to buy a two bedroom apartment. And I had someone in the crowd that uh, was at the auction just watching. Yes. That funnily enough was at the previous auction for the one bedroom unit that didn't register or bid. And then as soon as they saw that result uh, for the two bedroom, I showed them back through that afternoon. Yep. And then uh, they, made, they made an offer and we sold it a few days after that. How much? Uh, Eight sixty-eight. Eight sixty-eight thousand. Great work. Correct. Good mate. Correct. And how about um, was it was it um, Page Street? No, I was in Pagewood. What was the? I forget. 32, 32 Park Parade. Park Parade. The buyer that ended up buying it, you know, uh, forty-eight hours after auction, uh, saw the saw the advertised price online. They missed out on an auction that day. Uh, right. Locally somewhere else. Yep. So motivations were very high. Saw the price. It was in their budget. Uh, just said we don't want to muck around. Offered full price on the Sunday. Well done. Got the contract. Got the contract reviewed Monday, and then uh, yeah, exchange circa four o'clock Monday afternoon. Wow, Edition at full 66W. asking price two one seven five. All set for a big day today. Looking forward to getting down to the agency and doing a sales training session. And we have an auction in Penrith. I think at eleven a.m., which will be pretty cool. Actually, have a look at this. I sold this unit on Saturday. This apartment here for Cobden and Hayson. It sold for a million and fifteen, I think it was. Might have been a million and sixteen thousand. Two bedroom unit, no parking. Had a reserve price of nine hundred thousand dollars. Really strong result. <laughs> oh, Did you see that? Man. That was like a dance move. That's what I was <laughs> Today I thought we'd be good to get a bit of the brains trust in here, what's happening in the market right now. Watching the news, we're seeing what's happening. Boom, boom, biggest ever, biggest ever. These guys are the engine room of the market. They're out there every single weekend. The most important message is the market is still very strong. And we're still, we're still getting great number of registered bidders at auctions and prices are still incredibly strong. What we have seen is when the market was really uh, booming, and I'm talking like February, March, and the market still is booming, but when the market was really hot, what we were seeing were vendors' expectations were here, and the buyers were prepared to pay significantly more. So the buyers were outstripping the vendors. Now what we're seeing is that the vendors are just catching up to the buyers. Because we've been seeing such strong sales, an owner sees a sale in the street, and they're selling their home, and they're like, well, that sold for 2.6, my house is better than theirs, so now it should be worth 2.8 or maybe $3 million. I think that the critical thing that I would like everybody to take away from today is that how important it is to make sure that we are talking to our owners every single day. The more often that we speak to our vendors, it's the consistency of contact that actually builds more trust. 
between the owner and you as the agent. And it's that consistency of contact um, that will help them listen to you on the day of the auction. Thanks, team. As soon as I sign up a campaign, I do come back to the office and the first thing I do is book uh, one of the teams at Coolies. Um, Damien is busy for the next two years, <laughs> so I can always get <laughs> Jake or Bree. Um, so all jokes aside, um, Coolies definitely work their hardest to get my vendors their best price and work with me on auction day to ensure that the auction process is a smooth transition and a successful one too. Wow, we're going to have to get a wriggle on. I've got to be there for 11 o'clock auction. Lucky I'm good at making up time on highways. Better not film that though. <laughs> Let's go sell a shed. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to our auction today. Damien Cooley is my name. On behalf of the teams at CBRE and PRD Commercial, we'd like to welcome you all here to today's sale. 51 Leland Street here for us in Penrith. Who'd be happy to open the bidding? 4.3, it's a start. That's your bid, thank you, sir. Your bid's at $4,300,000. And the bid's immediately in front now. Bid $4,300,000. 4.4, $4,400,000. 4.5, sir. 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4
So South Dowling sandwiches basically have, um, like if South Dowling sandwiches was, was a tree, it wouldn't have any fruit on it, it just had $50 notes coming off it. It's a cash business. <laughs> oh, you're in the cross. Oh, good. <laughs> Jeez, you ran fast. Um, mate, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's my fault. No, no, don't worry. If you're in the cross, mate, you're not going to run back here now. He's run down to Double Bay. He's gone back in, back, heading back towards the city, got to the cross. And now he's going to run back here. Kid can run. Paul's going to run here, so um, we'll just we'll sit at the sit at the car. What do you reckon? <laughs> I don't want to shake your hand. Work. You're all sweaty. I'm at the cross. <laughs> this is Paul, my brother. And what three weeks ago he ran the Canberra Marathon, and he ran two hours and fifty-one minutes. Four minute PB. <laughs> Four minute PB. My PB was two hours and fifty-three minutes. He only had one goal: beat me, and he did. <laughs> Have you got a pillow? I need a pillow. I feel like having a sleep after the size of that thing. Let's go. Next stop, Sella Vinoteca. But we also need to understand they are paying $185 a head and we need to make sure that we give them a premium product. We might be thinking that things are expensive now, but we might be looking around going far out. I wish I bought in 2021.